I'm Fred Moranzo, and this show is being taped on Thursday, November 11th, 2004. Today my guests are Kim Adonizio and Susan Brown, and we're going to be talking about poetry and uh, poems and poets, and ladies, welcome to the show. Thanks. <laughs> Thank you. Thanks for being here. should also mention that you um, are both published authors. You've, Kim, you've written a couple of, you had a couple of books on um, poetry, and you're coming out with a novel, actually coming out with a novel uh, next year sometime. And Susan, you've also got, a, got uh, some some literature published as well. So you're both, you have some accolades. You were you won a Pushcart Prize, uh, I believe. You've gotten some fellowships as well. So you're some, you're some real poets here. I'm glad to have you on the show. You've got a CD uh, that's come out. Now, you, you've collaborated on a CD here called, called um, Swearing, Smoking, Drinking, and Kissing. Right. And uh, it's kind of a, a word music um, collection with, um, with with music to poetry. I want to talk about that a little bit. Kim? Sure, yeah. Um, well, Susan and I put that together after we'd been asked to do some um, a performance event and we were asked to work with a musician. So we found a, a very talented musician to work with who played guitar and mandolin and, and he recorded um, some things that we did. And then um, I got the idea of doing a CD for the publication of my latest book, which is actually my fourth collection, okay. um, What Is This Thing Called Love, from Norton. And I thought it, it would be nice to put a CD with it, and then it kind of evolved from doing something of my own to listening to the tracks that Susan and I had done mm -hmm. and realizing we had some really good stuff together. Mm -hmm. So we ended up building on that and then getting another musician to work with, and we just ended up collaborating and, and making kind of a fun uh, collaborative project together. Okay. And um, how, you've got a couple of poems. You've got a number of poems on here as well. Um, from your, you have a, a collection called Buddha's Dogs. Right. That just came out in April. Okay. Do you, uh, do you have anything before that? Um, no, that's my first book. That is okay. Yeah. Great. And you, but you teach. You teach poetry as well. I right? teach at um, Diablo Valley College okay. in Pleasant Hill. I see. And okay. I have been there for a long time. Okay. Yeah. Great. And what what does it mean to be to be a poet? I mean. Um, what, what, what is your philosophy? How did you get into poetry? Your background, I mean, I know that your mother was a tennis star. Uh -huh. And we're not going to yeah. be talking about your mom, but I'm just curious, uh -huh. how, how did you... Oh, she would love it if we were talking about her. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> she, was, she was quite a tennis star. She was, yeah. She was four times national champion. She won Wimbledon the one time she played it. Okay. Um, so oh, she uh, was very, very big in her day. She won Wimbledon? Yeah, absolutely. Wow. Yeah, Wimbledon champion and what was then Forest Hills and is now... Um, What's right. the national tennis champions champ, championships now called? Mm -hmm. Anyway, it's she for, was I think it's Forest Hills. I mean, in New York. Now it's just called the Nationals. Oh, okay. or, yeah, but um, yeah. So um, I came from a sports background, and my father was actually a sports columnist for the Washington Post, okay. and grew up with a lot of sports on television, and. Uh, I think reading was my escape from that. Oh, okay. And I had four brothers, and I was the only girl, so I, you know, I read books, and that was a different world that I found from the world that I grew up in, and uh, and so that proved to be a more hospitable world for me. That's uh, where I ended up. Oh, I see. Yeah. And and you've um, so you went to college and. Uh, did you get a, did a master's degree, or how did you... Uh, Eventually, you I went to college, yeah. I dropped out a couple okay. of times first. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, finally ended up getting a degree when I was about 28, okay. and that, that's when I got interested in writing, seriously. Mm. Okay. And then I went on and got a master's at San Francisco State. Mm -hmm. Okay. And, uh, yeah. San Francisco State. And how about you, Susan? Well, Kim and I um, play tennis. Okay. We are. Um, so that's one of our connections. We're, yeah. we're poet. We we recite poetry across the net as we <laughs> as we hit the ball. Right. And um, no, we really do. It's funny. And we've been. Uh, I w came from a tennis playing family too. And uh, and about my education, I just I went to college and got my master's degree. And mm -hmm. I was just always interested in writing mm -hmm. and poetry particularly. But okay. um, I'm working on my f first novel too. Oh, are you? I just have always been in love with it right. since I can. Well, actually, the next door neighbor, um, a next door neighbor down in Long Beach where I grew up, she gave me. I was about ten, and she gave me my first book of poetry. I see. Um, so. And that kind of sparked it. Yeah. From there. Yeah. Okay. What What about poetry? I mean, what What's uh, What is poetry? How do you, How do you define poetry? I mean, it's It's not a short story. It's not a novel. 
What, what, is, what does it mean to yeah, you? Yeah, you know, it's funny because we've been talking about this all night. <laughs> we, we had dinner before we came here and we got in this whole intense philosophical, philosophical. discussion about poetry and, and is it about beauty and is that what we're looking for and is that what we're doing? But right. I, I don't know. I think, I think when we talk about poetry, we're just talking about something very fundamental to life and we're talking about the life force and we're just talking about that thing because we use the term in all kinds of ways, you right. know, we don't just use it in talking about language. Mm -hmm. Somebody, you know, we see a beautiful dance piece and we say that was pure poetry the mm -hmm. way they did that. So what right. do we mean by that? Right, right. You know, we mean something <laughs> that we can't really talk about but that we really recognize and that, and that it's the little aha of life. Yeah. You right. know, that little thing that makes us feel more alive. So that's what I think about when I think of poetry in terms of language. It's mm -hmm. language that wakes us up and makes us feel more alive mm -hmm. and makes us feel like, oh, I, I recognize this or I understand this or I don't understand this but I want to. And mm -hmm. So that's, I, I don't know if that's mm -hmm. a clear definition but mm -hmm. um, I just remember when I really, I, I kept journals for many years but I remember reading some Sylvia Plath Mm -hmm. in my late 20s and and the the turn to really becoming a poet was when I read some poetry and I had that thing that Emily Dickinson talks about which is that you recognize its poetry mm -hmm. when you feel as though the top of your head is coming off <laughs> and I read something and that's the way I felt I see so I went what is this <laughs> right and and that turned out to be poetry and then I began to sort of explore it mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. yeah and I had the same experience when I was about 10 mm -hmm. and that my Virginia Lloyd was her name and she was a beatnik mm -hmm. she was she lived next door and she wore a leotard with a v-neck and a, a interesting skirt and she she did yoga this is in the 50s and she drank her whiskey neat and she <laughs> she swam a mile a day in the ocean I thought she was the most interesting woman I had ever seen in my little suburban life down there in Long Beach and anyway she came waltzing in with this book and she gave it to me and it was Archie and Mahitable mm -hmm. by Don Marquis Okay. And he was in, and it was a, it was modern poetry. Of course, it was in, in lines, but it didn't necessarily rhyme. Uh, but it had its internal rhyme and meter. But but it was Archie was a cockroach, and he lived in uh, this journalist's room, and. When and when the journalist went away, Archie got onto the typewriter and started typing his poetry. <laughs> and and Mahitable the cat had had nine lives. Uh -huh. And so Mahitable was in the room as well, and she filled Archie with all of her lives and all of her philosophies. And and he couldn't, he was too, he didn't weigh enough, so he couldn't get the shift key down. Uh -huh. So all the <laughs> capitalization was a mess and the punctuation. And of course, I hadn't read E.E. E. Cummings yet, but uh -huh. I just, it took the top of my head off. I and see. I was only 10. Okay. And I'm sitting there looking, and I'm sure I didn't understand hardly any of the philosophy that was in it or the history or, cause, because Mahitable had been everything. So she had been all these historical creatures and everything and mm -hmm. people. And, but I just, I never, that I fell in love immediately. And then okay. she, then Virginia saw I like that. So she gave me this fairly beautiful, really uh, hardbound, beautiful book of, um, Archie Mahitable had been a paperback. Mm -hmm. And this one was this beautiful uh, hardbound book of poetry and litho and uh, wood carvings. Mm -hmm. And I just the art, just all of it. Uh, for yes. a suburban yes. kid yeah. in Long Beach, you know, Those my are, parents didn't yeah. read poetry and, it just it took the top of my head off Excellent. forever oh, okay. yeah and i was thinking poetry could be it might maybe it's uh, a medium that could be used in the next uh, presidential campaign <laughs> instead of these attack ads i mean wouldn't it be nice to hear poetry <laughs> instead of having to listen to these rants and raves i mean it's another way to rant i guess or another way to make your observation i don't know well what do, what do you it's think? just a, it's a different <laughs> aspect of the world i i mean it's the same front if you will mm -hmm. Um, but I think it's a very different way of approaching the world than the way politicians approach it. Mm -hmm. So I don't know how congruent the two worlds would be. Mm -hmm. I mean, what I'm attracted yeah. to poetry is the, is, the, is the revelation, is the truth. Because mm -hmm. nobody's trying to sell anything or mm -hmm. get anything. Um, politics seems to be all about that. Right, yeah. right. Um, It'd be kind of sad if they, they stole it <laughs> to yeah. use it for their ends. Yeah. But, uh,